All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Tim Full Hat. We want to, uh, real quick, hear a word from our sponsor, Athletic Greens. I take Athletic Greens every day because I want to better gut health, more energy, optimize immune system, okay? I hate taking a bunch of pills and vitamins. I want a supplement that actually tastes great and want to see what the hype was all about. So what is this stuff? With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods-sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. All the things. And it's real simple, okay? It contains less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Tons of people take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb, okay? It costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your, in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash timfoil. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash timfoil to take ownership over your health and pick the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Enjoy the show. Tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed and a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. You just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and good friend on the ones and twos, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard, you're a good friend too. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Everybody, yes. everybody. Ma, 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 ma. No, I think we got one before Merry Christmas, but happy holidays, everybody. Okay. Happy holidays. Guys, I'm just going to tell you, today's episode, Woo! nothing but bangers. My head For is real. still sweating. Bomb. Dude, this guy just kept wanting to go. And I was like, I can't take anymore. There's too much truth bombs being dropped. I can't digest it all. Dude, I'm telling you, dude. A Dr. Narco Longo came on and dropped the hammer Doctor. of the guy. Doc, Doctor. Dr. <laughs> Narco Longo came up, and we finally got the episode I've been wanting to talk about. Moors in America, Florida. It is everything. This it might be this guy coming in at the end of the year making runs at the Mount Crushmore of 2022. He's taking my vote. I'm not even going to Oh, lie. shit. I'm, I'm throwing Damn. mine in there. Damn. Damn. Yeah. Xavier's yeah. calling it yeah. his favorite show of the year. Yeah, it was Crazy, hot. bro. Crazy. So we're super excited. Real quick, uh, if you want to see me live, see anybody live, go to samtriplee.com. Anybody in the history of time, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. you go go samtriplee.com, hit events. Uh, Batavia, Illinois. I'm going to be at the Comedy Vault with my good friends, Zane Helberg, Andrew Rafi. They'll be with me. And then Phoenix, Arizona, House of Comedy. Oh, Real quick. The, so Illinois, I'm going to be there the uh, 12th through the 14th. And then the following week, I will be in Phoenix, Arizona, January 18th through the 21st. 21st. Come get weird. Uh, guys, listen, man, there's a lot going on. Uh, you just go to samtruth.com. You can check out all, all, my, all my premium content. Now, here's the thing. Rockfin, for $15, you get everything on the channel. But uh, you guys like, that's a, that's a lot of money. Okay. Guess what? They're also allowing you to do five dollar subscriptions to per show, and I have four shows on there. Okay, I have. You're already in twenty bucks right there. 
No, you, so you, if you know, but if you paid for all of them, you're already 20 bucks. You yeah, might as well pay for the yeah, whole thing and get yeah. it the whole work. You can get all my stuff. Conspiracy Social Club, zero, tinfoil hat premium, all there, okay? Then you get first look at Broken Sim. You get Union of the Unwanted live streams. We you don't also smoke the get, same. We don't smoke the same. I mean, nothing but bangers for a very, very low price. There is 400 different episodes, 400 different content creators I'm Rockfin, all for fifteen dollars. There's no better deal out there. The best, the best are all there. Okay, so go to Rockfin.com. Tim Fall Hat Zero Conspiracy Social Club, uh, uh, Premium. Uh, excuse me, uh, Broken Simulation. We don't smoke the same. Sign up for any of them. Then just if you're looking for investment, and listen, this show's starting to cook with gas. We're a top almost two hundred financial show in the United States. Uh, it's called Cash Daddy. So that's a, a crowded field. The, what? The financial uh, is a crowd. I mean, everybody throws their hat into the financial game. So, so we're banging, yeah, bro. Yeah, we're banging with some so real So just heat. go to uh, patreon.com slash cash daddies. What's and that $1,000 a month there? Woo! Opportunity? Like, dude, that's for 20 bucks, you get daily investment advice from Howie Dewey, who's been crushing it. Johnny, is he crushing it? Oh, he's killing it. Yeah, he, I mean, they just made, uh, I think, almost 50% on something that he put Damn. in yesterday. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, and then for $1,000 a month, Johnny and I, and we'll even invite Xavier if you really want to. You, you don't get any of the money, but you can watch. Uh, for $1,000 a month, a month, we'll watch you and your significant other make love and give any tips. And we, I have we two do give scholarships. We tried to give a couple out last night. Yeah, to, uh, well, well, if you Sam. make a case, we'll give you 99% off scholarship okay we tried last night but we tried we tried we tried uh did they get a free blue chew with that dude i'll throw in a blue chew if you get the thousand dollars we're not throwing in medication no. uh there's you can go to samtribute.com and uh okay i don't know why it's not showing up here i have we have a bunch of different we have a bunch of different um t-shirts go to t-shirts go to tinfo at t-shirts.com sorry guys it's taking so long but we have our special holiday sweater, uh, the Christmas mushroom sweater for Tim Fall Hat. All these shirts, great way to support the show, okay? Great way to support the show. Also, okay, that's it. Just buy gold with Wise Wolf. I have uh, brown gas. People have been buying that. I don't know why that banner's not up there. My cameos are on fire, uh, T-shirts, and that's it. Anything else? No, we get a rock. Let's go. It's Let's the best go. episode. Joy, yeah, check, check out Broken Sim. Uh, we had one just drop Monday, and we're going to have another one coming out soon. They've been really good. Dude, Werewolves and angels. That's all I'll say. This Woo. episode, is, I'm telling you, is the truth bomb of all truth bombs. Enjoy the show. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. All right. Let's get into it. Very excited for today's episode. We're trying to go out with a bang that we got this episode, and I think we got two more after it. Then we wrap it up for the year. Uh, you know, the show has grown so much, and uh, it's because of shows like this episode. I'm very excited to have this gentleman on. Uh, he has a YouTube channel called Old World Florida. Please welcome Dr. Narco Longo. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, doctor? I'm good, Sam. How are you doing? Well, Glad I'm, to be here. I'm crushing it. I appreciate you spending some time with us uh, on our, our show. Uh, I love these topics, hidden history, all that stuff. It's probably right there with probably my favorite topic. Hidden history is probably my favorite topic. It's really opened my eyes to the world we live in and the layers of deceit that we've been born into. And uh, so I'm excited to talk, talk to you about what you've discovered. Now, for our listeners who may not be familiar with you, okay, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where they can find you? Sure. I'm a Old World Florida on YouTube and... Basically, I'm a researcher, YouTuber, uh, documentary maker, I guess. And I really just, I guess you could say a Florida historian at this point. Um, I've lived in Florida my whole life. I've always been conspiracy minded. I had a few experiences that led, led me to pretty much commit to this path. And uh, uh, that happened when I was about 18. I'm 26 now. So... Uh, that's what I've been up to since then and amassing 
this type of information, Florida history, because uh, people don't realize Florida is kind of the birthplace of America. It's kind of left out of a lot of the history books. People think it's always, uh, you know, Virginia or Maryland or, um, you know, these English settlements when the Spanish were here quite a while before. Well, but, uh, that's. I'm excited to talk to you because... Uh, I've always thought like whenever you got, I don't know when the last time you guys were in Florida, you were recently yeah. there. I was there like last month. Yeah. Florida is wonderful. It's just wonderful. And when you go there, you're like, this is great. And then you just see how nationally it is betrayed. Florida man, <laughs> all that stuff. Yeah. And, it's a big state though. It's I mean, a big state. It's a diverse state. Also. And there's some crazy people, but that's also what makes it great. Is that there's some crazy people, but whenever I hear that there's this over overwhelming narrative on anything, I go, "Why is that overwhelming narrative out there? What are they trying to get us to think, and why are mm -hmm. they getting us to try to think that?" Okay, and Flo I, I mean, I'm just telling you, man. I mean, just look at everything that's happened over the last couple of years. I mean, we go from like Florida man and everyone laughing at Florida. To you know the you remember basalt guy that oh, was a big uh, story oh yeah the basalt cannibal guy mm -hmm. that guy's face yeah. right who like now we're uh, people are starting to talk about some MK Ultra some v virus vaccine oh I haven't heard that stuff one. yeah that's what and that the uh, the basalt thing was a cover up Got it. okay so so we get into that like all the different things that are going on so uh, I'm very very excited now. You you let us know a little thing. You're not an official doctor. What do you? What, but you just decide to grab that moniker. You're just like I'm. I'm a doctor. I don't care. Is it? And are you, are you just poking holes at the the medical community? What are you? What are you doing? Well, I, I've never tried to pose as a medical doctor, um, but I I definitely don't have high regard for doctors in general, uh, not in the modern context. So I, I really have no shame adopting that <laughs> that moniker. Uh, so it's a pseudonym, really. It's actually my, my name rearranged. So if you can work that out, but uh, interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. I like that. I was wondering who named their kid Narco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's very interesting. You know, it's so funny because. Uh, I think the guy who, who who is in charge of the WHO, he just made himself a doctor, and he has no real Are like. You serious? Yeah, That's... he just he's like I'm a doctor. I'm not surprised. Isn't and there like, plenty of people that do that? Oh yeah, and then you have the Reverend L. Sharpton. He's not a Reverend, uh, and the Reverend Jesse Jackson. They are not reverends of anything. They just put that on there because they know it plays to their constituents. And they're like, oh, he's a God, man of God. Oh, he's just a dude who works for the FBI. And here's another thing. Who questions it? Like, who questions a doctor? Hey, are you a real doctor? This I is the first time. about a bishop? Who questions a bishop? You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. How'd you get that? Name? Bishop? <laughs> bishop. <laughs> what, are you, what, are, what is this? Chess? What are we doing? Should I hit him up seeing that I found Jesus now? Should I hit him up, tell him I'm in the glory? Yeah, Come on back on the show. You're a deceiver. Rhymed. I'm not a deceiver. No, he'll say, I said he'll just say you're a deceiver. Okay. All right. Well, sorry that we got a little weird there, Dr. Narco Longo. Uh, I'm very excited to talk to you. Uh, so where do you want to begin? Do you want to talk about the Garden of Eden and what you believe you discovered? Well, it's not a, not necessarily my discovery, um, but I definitely... Uh, you know, agree, or else I wouldn't be shouting it from the rooftops. But I guess we could kind of just start with, with what you said, Sam. Uh, you go down to Florida, you feel great, it's wonderful. And it's almost kind of like a well-kept secret. Everyone knows about Florida, everyone knows about the beaches, but it still has this negative connotation. Florida, right? It's the land down under. It's kind of like America's Australia, right? Yeah. But the Garden of Eden, well, anyone that's familiar, familiar with my channel will know uh, Florida is the Garden of Eden, the historical, physical Garden of Eden. And there's a, many different angles you could approach that by, but just starting out, uh, it has the most 
constant temperate climate in the world, the Gulf of Mexico area. Uh, Florida is not hot. People think it's hot. They'd probably put it at the the list of hottest cities in America. If you gave someone the opportunity or asked them to, they'd probably put Miami pretty high up on, on that list of cities. But what if I told you Miami has only ever gone over 100 degrees Fahrenheit one time in recorded history? And that was 1941 or 1942. And that is the only time it's gone over 100 degrees. So you have that. You have the weather. Basically, Florida cannot stay warm. It cannot stay hot. The Gulf Stream keeps the area so moderately uh, temperate. The air just blows right over. So it's a constant supply of fresh, fresh, clean air, cool air. So let me ask warm. you something. So sure. when I have friends of mine that move from California to Florida and they're mm -hmm. like, dude, the humidity is killing me. It's the humidity. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's molesting me. It touches me <laughs> in my private places. It violates me. What is your thoughts on that? Well, I live in a van most of the time here in Florida, uh, so I'm spending a lot, vast majority of my time outside. Uh, I would say when you're adjusted to it, I was born here, it's not uncomfortable. Uh, the summers definitely can be. But did you know, uh, every summer, Florida very, very rarely ever goes over 100 degrees. Kansas, Nebraska, um, all these places up in the northern United States, they will each, Colorado even, they will each reach 115 degrees plus every summer and have for the last 100 years. Florida barely, if ever, goes over 100, as I just showed you. As for the humidity, well, you might find it uncomfortable if you're wearing 10 pounds of makeup on your face, if you're overweight, if you're a drinker, if your pores are screaming for help, you know. So I think Florida's a land for the healthy, and I think God designed it that way. And uh, that's why all the old people come here, because they're sick of freezing in the torrid zone. Uh, cold weather is hostile to the human body. And basically, all these old people come down here. They're being pulled by this, the uh, electromagnetic, you know, impulse, the Bermuda Triangle, whatever you want to call it, the fountain of youth. Wow. And that's why they all come here at the end of their life oh, to reap the benefits oh. unknowingly. Uh, and they do so. Can I, can I ask now, does that do the benefits and do, do the special qualities of the state begin at the border? Because the border seems kind of arbitrary. Oh, oh. <laughs> The border is arbitrarily drawn, I would say. So where are you saying, I mean, I think we're using Florida, it, it, you know, it's just kind of a matter of convenience, that word. Where are you saying these benefits truly begin? Is it, is it an area uh, centralized around like Miami, would you say? What, what are we talking here? Because, I mean, is it, does it count as far south as Key West? What are we, what are we talking about? Jacksonville? Primarily the Gulf Coast of Florida. The Gulf, the Gulf Coast. Coast oh, wow. The Gulf Coast of Florida is the true and the only fertile crescent the fertile crescent in the middle east is neither fertile nor a crescent there's barely any water certainly not much spring water okay it's arid agriculture is nearly impossible there's such little uh fertile land and clean water that that's why these areas are constantly warring for thousands of years florida has such abundance it supplies enough sustenance through its produce for about five uh 50 countries right florida alone can feed 50 con 50 countries okay uh you show me one country in the middle east that you think is the lush tropical subtropical hospitable paradise in which adam and eve regardless of you know your religious beliefs the cradle of civilization where adam and eve would have been able to live naked it was not the Middle East. And we can get into all the history of this. You know, this is just all my opinion so far. I haven't really shown you anything. But, yay, we want to hear it. Why do you think the Garden of Eden and, and the Fertile Crescent are in Florida? What, what data is there? Okay, sure. Well, basically, 
this is kind of got tied tied into Atlantis too. I know I kind of wanted to keep those separate, but they're they're inadvertently connected. All right, I'm Based. listening. Okay. Well, let's start with the Fertile Crescent. That's a good place to start. The Mississippi is the Nile. It is the true Nile. Okay. A lot of people are in denial about this, right? <laughs> <clears throat> so Mrs. Mississippi, the, the River Nile was nicknamed the River Isis, the River of Isis, okay? Nile does not have the word Isis in it. Can you, th- can you show me one river on the planet that has the word Isis inside of its name? Can you, that hold on, be... let's play, don't, no, no, can you go? I know three rivers. Of course not. What are your rivers that you know? Amazon, okay. the Nile, Mississippi, yeah. and he named two of them. Hey, <laughs> you just said it. What? Mississippi, right? Yeah. Mississippi. What? That, yeah, my, my ISIS. That's what he said. ISIS. Huh? Yeah, but you're like, I don't know. And like one of, the, and one of the three you named is the answer to it's it. It's not ISIS. Though. He already said the answer. Though, yeah. Though. It's Mississippi, but it's the Mississippi my, River. Mississippi right, but he said has that. the word ISIS found right <laughs> smack in the middle of it. No, but I was saying that he said Mississippi has ISIS in it. Can you name another river that has oh, ISIS? Oh, yeah, that's oh. how he said it. Oh, no, I, I didn't say another. No, he did say that. Sorry, I was just what? being dramatic. He, but uh, No, no, you said... Can you name a another r- river that in has the in ice- the Middle East right. that says other than Mississippi? Is did that what you he was say saying? Mississippi? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Okay, all right. Well, I guess I'm the asshole in on that one. <laughs> My apologies, Xavier. You can t- call me an idiot. You're allowed. You get one get out jail free. <laughs> Um, okay. It's my first one. I don't know how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. So because ISIS is in Mississippi, you think that le- that means something? Well, well, well that's 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 just a, a tiny, tiny piece okay, of this. Okay, respect, okay. respect. Well, I mean, it's it's hard to approach from any from any uh, angle, but the Fertile Crescent is a good place to start. I'll explain. The Fertile Crescent, like I said, there's no Fertile Crescent in the Middle East. Okay, I have a very hard time believing that land originated in the Fertile Crescent. There was four rivers going out of Eden, the Euphrates, Tigris, um, the Pison, and the Gihon. Two of them uh, have not been located. They don't know where they are. They say maybe they're dried up. They don't know. So we only have the two to go off of. And that is pretty much the only evidence that they have that the Middle East is the Fertile Crescent. Mesopotamia, right? Mesopotamia is pretty much synonymous with Fertile Crescent. But what if I told you Mesopotamia is Mississippi-tamia, Mississippi-tamia, or maybe it's Mexopotamia, the Gulf of Mexico, which the Mississippi feeds into. Now, you're probably thinking, well, if this were the true cradle of civilization, we would expect to find one Abrahamic religion there, you know, that, that originated there. Well, I'm telling you that Islam originated in the Gulf of Mexico, in the southeastern okay. United States. All right, we're in it. We're in it. Here we go. Now, how is that? You have the Muscogee people of Florida. Okay, you have South Carolina, which was once part of Florida territory with its crescent, Arab crescent and palm tree, which is an Arab insignia, uh, Islamic insignia. You have uh, New Orleans, which was at one time called Crescent City, the crescent moon. You have Texas, which is the lone star. So if you know anything about Islam, it's a crescent moon and a star. Alabama has an Arabic prefix, Al-Abama, okay? Mm. You have along the Mississippi River, you have in Athens, a Venice, a Cairo, Memphis, uh, Alexandria, uh, a Carthage. You, you can go on and on, okay? So which one of these are first? Did Were these just explorers that were so infatuated with the Bible, they named everything they saw after the Bible? I don't think that's the case. For example, well, I was talking about the Muskegee. Let's let's look at some some Muskegee so that you guys can see what I'm talking Paul, about. What state did you say had the Islamic flag in it or a symbol? Well, South Texas, Carolina. The Lone State. South Carolina has a crescent. As South Carolina the is the crescent. crescent. Mm-hmm. So, 
South Carolina has the Crescent. Okay. Florida has Crescent City. I can show you guys all this. Oh, snaps, bro. Actually, uh, Mo Mobile, Alabama, is actually Mabilla. And it was called Mabilla until they anglicized it. Mabilla is Alabama backwards. Mabilla, Alabama. Okay. This is an Arabic prefix. Alabama, Algonquin. Uh, f feed me some other ones. If you know. Albuquer Albuquerque. Okay. This is like algebra, alcohol. These are all Arabic words. Interesting. Um, Interesting. Now, who, who, who was the first people to come to Florida? They were the Spanish. Well, what if I told you that months before Columbus set foot in the Americas, Puerto Rico, that Spain had just kicked the Moors, a Muslim empire, out of Spain. Okay, now it's getting interesting. Now we're and getting there interesting. there you have your runaway Muslims. Okay. Now, the most famous group of Sem uh, natives in Florida are called the Seminoles. Seminole means to run away. It also means Semitic. Seminole is the Semitic. These are Semitic people in America, and I'm going to show you what they look like. So the Moors were Islamic? Yes, sir. And you're saying that Islam started in the States? Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures and you decide for yourself. Just don't put Muhammad up there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you allowed to do that on Rockfin? <laughs> <laughs> you, you are. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. It's already Here we go. Can you see it? Yep. We can see some. Yeah. What if his name is actually Mo Hamid? That's Mo well, just, just American. That's a lot more just American. Mo Hamid. Yeah, now, this man you are looking at right here is a native American, believe it or not. Now, you raise your hand when you tell me you think you're looking at a North African or a non American. Okay. These are all Native Americans, by the way, officially, we're told. Yeah, I mean, that guy looks like Moroccan or something. Exactly. Time. Moroccan is Moors. So Mauritania, Morocco. Mauritius. All right. So if you're listening at home, he's going through uh, the great, the, the doctor is going through a series of pictures, uh, which how, as Johnny said, they look Moroccan. They look, they look. They don't look like Native American. They're definitely not dressed like Native Americans. That's not these the are, usual Native these American attire. Your, these are not your feather and uh, feather and war paint Native Americans. These are turban wearing. Uh, and these Arabic are the more clothing. Billy Bowlegs. You know, oh, that's Billy Bowlegs right there. Yes, you know Billy Bowlegs. Yes, good job. Is that for yeah. real? I said it. Yeah. Up, man. Oh. Billy, Billy Bowleg. So the average height, now we're going to uh, introduce another dimension to this whole thing. Wow. The average the average height to Seminoles, six foot four. You know what their average life expectancy was up until about the 1960s? How long? A hundred years old, in the wild. Damn. Out in the wild, no air conditioning, no nothing, just roughing it every day. Six foot four. They look like no one in the Americas. Those are good genes. Yeah. Well, Okay. now that there. we're told the Seminoles officially, you know, the mainstream has a big issue with the Seminoles. They don't talk about them. These were the, uh, the group that Jackson was spending like billions of dollars trying to stomp out and eradicate. That's why they ran back into the Everglades. So that another thing about very Middle Eastern, that guy. Another thing about the Seminoles is that they had some of the most blue and purple dye in the pre uh, pre Ameri you know, pre modern times. Meaning, if you know anything about blue and purple dye, that was the symbol of royalty of high class yeah. because it was so hard to acquire. Well, it only comes from a couple places. You know, they have those sea snails that the Phoenicians were they were pulling up and built their empire off of. They also come from the Indigo. horseshoe crabs of the west coast of Florida. Whoa. So this blue blood, not only is it the dye 
that that makes these royal clothes, these uh, coveted colors that are so hard to get. This is also the blood that they are experimenting with to live forever because horseshoe crabs pretty much don't die. They can live, uh, I mean, uh, for a long, long time. They don't even know how long they live, really, because they don't age. So they are they're studying their blood, which is blue, right? So you hear the term blue-blooded people, right? These horseshoe crabs, which the Maya were traveling to go uh, get, basically were very valuable. Now, you mentioned Miami earlier. You want to know something that they're not going to tell you in the history, history class? What? Miami, Miami is Maya me. The Maya were in Florida, but they will not tell you that. They will not admit that. They, they are so dead set on the, the Maya. Well, okay, never, I got one now. That guy in the middle. Florida. That guy in the middle is not a. He he looks European to me. Yeah, it look pretty. He good. is a. That is a, either Frank Cushing, I believe, or some other guy. Oh, okay. Now is this but now yeah. that what is the purported explanation for this dress? Is this like Westernized dress? Is that what they okay. would say? Is the it, of, the official explanation right for the Seminoles and why they look so non-American is that they are they are a mix of two people, Celtic renegades like celtic people yeah, who, dis- yeah. who were disagreeing with everything that the current colonists were doing so they actually sided with the uh, natives and joined these tribes that's the official story it's a complete load of horseshit but that's the official story huh. and then that's half their blood the other half of their blood was runaway slaves runaway slaves well were they runaway slaves or were they runaway moors interesting that's mm-hmm. interesting, bro. <laughs> so they probably associate th- whenever you do a DNA test, which please don't do, okay? They they probably test you. You come up more. They tell you you got slave blood. Well, do you know why? It's because if you test na- uh, native Seminoles, they will come back half African, half Celtic. Well, there's one problem with that. What are the Moors? The Moors of Spain are black is uh, black Islamic Africans who invaded, well, as we're told, invaded Spain and took it over for a period of hundreds of years. Okay, prior to those dark skinned people coming in, they all looked like Irish people. All of Spain was Celtic people. This is why Portugal is the port to Gaul. Gaul is the Celtic lands. Port to Gaul, Portugal. So this is like Gaelic is Gaul, Gaelic. So these were Celtic people. When the Moors took them over, they mixed and you get half African, half Celtic. So that's their bullshit story <laughs> as to why you get half African, half Celtic blood. The most famous Seminole ever, his name was Osceola, right? Like Florida State University has Osceola, their mascot. Well, Osceola is not his real name. His real name was Billy Powell. And this guy we're looking at right here, that's not Osceola, but you can see this one's very Scottish dressing as well. So this was actually a federation. And from the word Muscogee, you get the word Muscovite, which is where we get the word Moscow. Do you know how many states in the Southeast United States have a city named Moscow? How many? A lot of them, at least five. Okay. Uh, Athens, Corinth. Why is that? Because the Creek are the Greek, the, the Muscogee and the Seminoles who are Semitic. They are, they also go by the word Creek. Well, Creek is Greek. How do we know this? There's New Smyrna, Florida. There's Venice, there's Naples. There's all these old city names that are unexplained. St. Petersburg, for example, Muska, you have Muscogee people. Muscovy, Russia. Well, you have St. Petersburg, Florida, and St. Petersburg, Russia. Mm. So, Wasn't that so Petrograd, you know, though, for a while? Like, during the communists, it, and they changed it back, right? Sorry, what was that? When, 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 when's your... Okay, your suggestion is that the St. Petersburg in Russia was named after the one in Florida, is that right? Or the same god by the same people that revere the same god. I'll tell you who Peter oh, is. Uh, okay. Peter is Jupiter. Jupiter. 
And I guess we're going to cross over into some astrology here. Oh, we, I, I don't want to get out of order. So if you want to do that at the end, it looks like yeah. you want to do that towards the end. So we can get into sure. that. Hey, everybody, I want to tell you about our good friends at Helix Sleep. I love Helix Sleep, okay? Helix is the premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on unique sleep preferences the helix lineup include 14 unique mattresses including a collection of luxury models a mattress for big and tall sleepers and even a mattress made for just kids okay so how will you know which helix mattress works best for you and your body take the helix sleep quiz and find the perfect mattress in two minutes and your personalized mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. Helix knows there's no better way to test out a new mattress than by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why they offer a 100-night risk-free trial. Try out your new Helix mattress, see how your body adjusts, and if you decide it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return it for a full refund. Everybody is unique and everyone sleeps differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each designed for specific sleep positions and feel preferences. They have models with memory foam layers to provide optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. They have models with more responsive foam to cradle your body for essential support in stomach and back sleeping positions. Plus, they have enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating at night. And that's one thing I do, boy, I overheat. I've always said that about about you bro always okay i took the helix sleep quiz and i matched with the midnight helix midnight medium feel pressure point relief side sleeper support i'm a sl- side sleeper dude no not only is this mattress the best i've slept on but it's also set way fast way easy okay helix mattress delivered in a box and straight to my door for free. Plus, Helix mattresses are American-made and come with a 10 or 15-year warranty, depending on the model. And remember, you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. If you don't love it, but we know you will, they will come and pick it up for you and give you a full refund. Yeah, it's just that simple. So here's what you want to do. Here's what we're offering. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com com slash tinfoil with helix better sleep starts now i have one question what was the population of them was there a big population we're talking thousands ten thousands see the issue is that these guys were given such a, a bullshit story on them there's such little information to go off of as is but i can tell you as of population we're told these were tribes of maybe a couple thousand in the everglades fighting an army of over 50,000 that Andrew Jackson sent. Did you know that uh, the Seminole Wars, which happened in the early to mid 1800s, was the most money the Americans ever, American government ever spent fighting a group of natives? So maybe that will tell you how big this power was, because we're told pretty much nothing about them other than the runaway slave narrative. Um, but there's a very European looking guy, but I'll show you some other pictures. Um, Thank you, dude. That's great. I mean, dude, I, I, I love, cause I've seen a lot of people talking about this and I feel like, like the story of the Moors is starting to come out more and more because based on, um, that, uh, Lady King or whatever movie that came out where they completely lied about the story yeah. and then people yeah. were just like well you know that's bullshit and the fact that there were tons of Moors in America and that the Moors yeah. came here way before Christopher Columbus and the notion yeah. that this country started when Christopher Columbus landed no dude no so in a weird way you said the runaways. So was Christopher Columbus chasing them, trying to figure out where they went? No. That's your very, really? oh, very intelligent connection because that's pretty much. <laughs> oh, shit. There we go. The that's... runaways, you got to follow them. Where the fuck did they go? They're my slaves. Don't God run away. Damn. XT's <laughs> on fire this episode. <laughs> Sam looking dumber well, than normal. <laughs> Christopher Columbus was actually Jewish. His name, his real name was Christabel Cologne. That's a fact. 
Cristobal Colon. Oh my God! Ooh. Every Italian just lost it yeah, on this really. fucking when, episode. When he well, Colum, Columbus is not an Italian name, not like that. When he when he went to Portugal, it became Colombo and Columbus. Okay, well, he is descended from the Colone family, which is a very ancient, very powerful family. So he was not some upstart sailor just, you know, looking for his chance to make it big. And they were not prepared for any spice trading, let me tell you. They took a couple hundred armed men, war dogs, okay? Um, They were not ready for trading. They were doing some war making. Right. So, so Cl- Christopher Columbus was sent by the Queen at that time to go bang with the Moors in America. Yes, that's what it looks like. That's what it's looking like. For example, when when Columbus uh, arrived, he was greeted with gifts. He was um, welcomed by the Taino people of Puerto Rico. Okay, he thought about things for a couple of days, and then he uh, basically hacked their heads off and enslaved the ones that he felt like enslaving. So that was day day one, essentially. Day that one. Was were these a naive people? Why why were they so welcoming? They just hadn't experienced that kind of warlike nature. What why why were they so welcoming to strangers? Well some people question the whole Columbus narrative entirely, and I don't blame them. But even just using his um <laughs> I'll pull up a picture that that helps explain okay, that. Well, you said that. Uh, is that the same thing as like when uh, was it uh, the Spaniard that conquered uh, Hernan Cortez that uh, took over Mexico? They welcomed him because he thought he was a god. You got to think about it. You're you're a Native American. You see people coming in ships. You're like these are gods, and they well, welcomed them with gifts. Well, we and can shit. we can get into that too because that's going to take us into Atlantis a little bit because that was not the first time that blonde hair, blue eyed people showed up. All right, so we're going to get into it when when you're ready to yeah. talk about that. But okay. you're going, you're uh, here. You go. I've got a picture, and this this will help tie it into the Garden of Eden, like I was saying. So this is one of the accounts that went back to Europe after the first expeditions to Florida. You guys ready? Yeah. Let's go, yeah. Early Spanish adventure. The spirit of this and other enterprises, other Spanish enterprises, may be gathered from the following passage in an address to the king, signed by Dr. Pedro de Santander, and dated 15th July, 1557. It is lawful that your majesty, like a good shepherd, appointed by the hand of the eternal father, should tend and lead out your sheep, since the Holy Spirit has shown spreading pastures whereon are feeding lost sheep, which have been snatched away by the dragon. Now, pause here. America means dragon. The word America means land of the dragon or the plumed serpent, America. Okay. One of the one of the first founders of America was a Viking by the name of Eric Sin or Leif Erikson. Oh yeah. Well, there's your America. Uh, Erica is all is also the root word of Iroquois, Cherokee, like Hanukkah, right? C H. And you know, if you if you turned on uh, History Channel ten years ago, they were all talking about how Native Americans are descended from Semitic people. Now, 10 years later, we're all looking at this from a whole, totally different angle, and it's, it's considered conspiracy theories, but I'll, I'll keep reading. That's snatched, crazy, bro. Snatched away by the dragon, the demon. These pastures are the new world, wherein is comprised Florida, now in possession of the demon. And here he makes himself adored and revered. This is the land of promise. Possessed by idolaters, the Amorite, the Amalekite, the Moabite, and the Canaanite. This is the land promised by the Eternal Father to the faithful, since we are commanded by God in the Holy Scriptures to take it from them, being idolaters, and by reason of their idolatry and sin, to put them all to the knife, leaving no living thing save maidens and children, their cities robbed and sacked their walls and houses leveled to the earth. And that's what they did. 
My, I love my favorite part of that is uh, save, save maidens, maidens and children. <laughs> You're like, same thing. why don't you just say you just killed all the guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's another uh, one of those weird historical advantages of being a woman that yeah, nobody ever talks that, about. That nobody ever. It's totally crazy, bro. That is nuts. That so is. So let's let's talk about this. Amorite. Amorite is a biblical way of saying right. more, more. Amorite. These are the, the homeland of the Moors. So one of the first passages coming back from Florida to, to the old world was saying there are Moors here. Amorite, Amalekite. Well, Malachite comes from the Congo. Amalekite, yeah, Moors and Congolese. Moabite and Canaanite. Canaanite is Phoenicia or Carthage or Israel. Canaanite. The, you know, these are... These are no nonsense words. Canaanite means uh, from Canaan, Phoenicians, the pre-Hebrew uh, people. So in this in this uh, letter from Pedro de Santander, he's telling the king what land they had just found. Did you know on Columbus's third voyage when he arrived in the north shore of, um, I, th I think, Brazil, but the Caribbean, he said, this is paradise. He said, we found the land of Garden of Eden, the paradise of the Old Testament. And he was convinced. So they knew this. They kept it a secret for about 300 years. Okay. Then the Americans got their, their hands on Spain. And then, uh, well, well, we'll get into all that. But I hope that... Uh, That's incredible. That's crazy, dude. I mean, like, I'm just like, I don't believe anything in history. What am I going to do when my daughters come home and start talking history? I'd be like, okay, just tell them what they want to hear. Just know it's all a lie. And when you're ready, daddy will drop the good stuff. Okay? Mm -hmm. you go ask your parents. Uh, go. <laughs> my dad used to do that with me as a kid. Dude, that's crazy, bro. I've, I've been waiting to do an episode like this forever. I'm so happy we're doing it. It's just like the whole narrative is bullshit. About well, let's the check out some. Remember I said those guys were tall, right? Yeah. They're tall. Well, how does that play in? How does that play into the Bible? Well, in the Bible, people lived for hundreds of years and were very, very tall. Okay. We got younger and shorter as the ages went on. And that's very explicit in the Bible, not just the Bible, pretty much all religious texts. But I'm going to show you, Florida is a land of giants. It has always been. Okay. And this is hidden from us because they are very selective about what they put in the museums. The right. Smithsonian is not our friends, guys. Okay. They do a lot more covering up than they do teaching. Um, but let me sh show you any second now. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Let's go. You guys see that? No, it's not. Uh... You got your desktop. We're seeing that folder. Giant. Yep. Oh, Giants. What... Uh oh, spoiler alert. Okay, Tampa Tribune, 1925. Skeletal remains of Florida giant is discovered. Well, that's one giant. Okay. Well, yeah, Discoveries good. of skeletal remains here, which, which may have an important bearing on theories of a giant race believed to have inhabited the Florida West Coast before the coming of the Spaniards, were made this morning by workmen grading the island road near the Charlotte and Lee County lines. The discoveries include a skull and a femur or thigh bone, both so highly mineralized as to be almost pure silica and limestone. Silica and limestone bones, guys. Very strange. That and is kept strange. From, kept from crumbling only by immersing in, gener in gelatin solution. Blah, blah, blah. The skull measured 23 centimeters in length and 18 in width. That's a lot more than an average skull, by the way. About Four one fourth... Yeah. Larger than normal modern skulls. Damn. Let me show you some more. This is the Cedar Keys Giant. Uh, where's what's this newspaper? 1922. Big mound yield skeleton. The remains of a gigantic aborigine was unearthed a few days ago 
in the midst of an Indian oyster mound. So there we have our first mention of mounds. They, and that happened yeah. right around when they took Negroes to Jacksonville. Yep. Yep. And that was <laughs> only about that was only about 20 years after Henry Flagler. Henry Flagler, the father of Florida, was busted using slaves 50 years after slavery ended. And that's that's the guy whose face is all over Florida. Right. This uh, the Seminoles also fought with the Confederacy. Do you guys know that? The largest, the largest slave plantation in Florida, or one of the largest, Kingsley Plantation, was ran by an African queen who was, we're told, was bought in Africa, married in America, and when her husband died, she ran that plantation by herself for years and years. So this was not, this whole Civil War narrative needs to be looked at. It, so, we can't so, just, we so can't, you're sorry. saying that the Native Indigenous, f and is Indigenous even the right word to use? I mean, that, well, that let's talk about, it tribe. is the right word. It is the right word, Sam. Let's look at the word Indigenous. Why did they call everyone in America Indians? Well, what's the difference between Indian and Indigenous? Because you're not allowed to call them Indians, right? That's rude. But indigenous is okay. That's the same word, essentially. Let me tell you why. What does indigenous also have in the word? I'm a linguist, by the way. I'm a phoneticist. Okay. What was the word I just said? I uh, completely forgot. Indigenous. Indigenous. Indigo. Indigo. These are indigo-skinned people, dark-skinned. Indigenous means dark-skinned. It does not mean native does not mean native it means indigo skin it's interesting indigo also is blue which is you referenced earlier the royal color the, you know, the, right the, exactly the royal color so they just put them all together Whoa, as one oh johnny they kind of put them all together as one indian is different than indigo because indian actually indians were actually white-skinned people these were the vikings that were down here in the in the gulf of mexico uh, thousands of years ago they were so white that they had to use red red ochre um body paint as sunscreen because these were people from norway in florida so they were very white they needed sunscreen unlike the indigenous people who don't need sunscreen the indians were redskins indians are redskins i've seen a native american they are not so red that i would look one in the eye and call him Red. Oh my yeah. God, that blows my mind. So, right? So the so red skin isn't about indigenous, it's about sunburned white Vikings. Yeah, these are either white people that are so sunburnt that they're red, or they're covering themselves with red ochre iron oxide paint, which is what Cro Magnon is because. Uh, these burials all over the Atlantic coast of all of all these continents have wow. burials that are older than anything that are covered with red paint. So these are the Phoenicians. Now, is this applicable Phoenici to the other tribes as well? The other tribes that are scattered throughout the uh, North so America. You, you listen, if you showed up to Rome, uh, you know, two thousand years ago, you would have varying levels of technology in a city, right? If you go into Atlanta. Not every person in the city is living in a five-star penthouse with an yeah, iPhone, yeah. right? I just mean the genetics, though, like how they appeared. Uh, did they? Did all of the? Yes, I was just I was just trying to to paint a point where, in America, when the Europeans arrived, you had varying levels of technology, uh, complexity, civilization, right? So. There were many races in America. I guess I can just flat out say that. Okay. There was black in America. There was white in America before Columbus. And there was Asian, okay? Most of our Northern Native Americans that you see being depicted with bows and arrows on horses with the kind of squinty eyes, those are Mongolian hordes that are left over in America from a previous uh, war that we are not necessarily told told about. If you guys know about Tartaria, this is kind of venturing into Tartarian territory. Yo, you a Tartarian uh, dog? You into Tartaria? 
Of course, yeah. Oh man, now these are a few of my favorite things. Do you think though, those those Mongolians you're talking about? Did they pass through this the that strait? The Bering, Bering Strait. Strait? That those, those are the only people that passed through the Bering Strait. No, the, all of America was not peopled or populated from the land the Bering Strait. Okay. Yes. Only the Asiatic ones. What's an Eskimo? Eskimos or Inuit? They look native. Uh, they look native Asian. Oh, they look es- just like those northeastern Russians. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're Asian. Yeah. Eskimos are Asian. Northern, like Pocahontas. When you see her in movies, Pocahontas is an is an Asian phenotype. Okay, these northern Native Americans were largely actually Asian, and that's like Genghis Khan yeah. on their horses. on their horses with their bows. The Mongolians, those are the Apache. The, this warrior culture in America, in the north, in the plains, right? In the south, you get this Moorish barber, barbarian, or Berber, like North African, Phoenician, Arabic culture. That's why this is the land of the crescent. The Gulf of Mexico is the fertile crescent. It makes a perfect crescent. It's right, it's right there for everyone to see. Cuba is the Kaaba of Islam. The land of the cube. Cuba is the Kaaba. Okay. Um, so let well, me ask let me... you something real quick, because <laughs> this is cr- so. I've been to. I've been trying to do research on this. Did Islam? Did did Islam exist before Muhammad? I mean, that's tough. Because who's who's Muhammad? Is he an Arabic person? He's actually not very Arabic. They actually have some of Muhammad's DNA, um, his hair. They have a strand of his hair on display in these museums, right? It's red hair. So his hair was red, solid red. And the tradition of dyeing your hair red or your beard red that they have in Afghanistan and all these other countries comes from the fact that they're trying to emulate this original red-haired leader that they had with a beard the only here's another one follow the beards okay if you're into tartaria you should be into barbaria too because they're the same word tartaria means east of rome because we have a roman history guys remember we have a roman history tartaria means east of rome barbaria means west of rome that's why you have berbers in north africa that are black and you have barbarians in germany and scandinavia that are white It's a Roman perspective to history. Okay, so Barbaria and Tartaria are the same thing. Well, in the Barbary Wars, where America was fighting Moors, we were fighting Morocco, Mauritania, um, Algeria, I think, these Moorish countries. That was in the uh, early 1800s, mid-1800s, the Barbary Wars. As soon as we won the Barbary Wars, fighting North African Moorish pirates, what happened in America? The age of piracy in South Florida, the Navy, the U.S. Navy immediately left North Africa and came to the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean and Key West, and they enacted martial law in Key West in the name of fighting piracy. So who were these pirates that that they were fighting that just popped up in Key West? Well, Florida was acquired in the late 18-teens, early 1820s, right, officially. In 1820, there was not a single permanent resident in Key West. By 1830, Key West was the richest city in America. How is that possible? That's crazy, During, dude. And and we're told that it was all due to pirates that were making such good money and shipwreckers and uh, divers, treasure divers. Well, I guess all these pirates were doing their taxes if, <laughs> if Florida, you know, if Key West became the richest city in America and it was the most populated city in Florida. One problem, there was no bridge. <laughs> you had to get there by boat. So what was going on in Key West where it was in a matter of nine years, 
went from not having a single person living there to being America's richest city. What happened? Well, it was pirates. It was the Barbers, the Berbers, the Seminoles, Semitic people. But uh, They showed, uh, hold on, so you're saying... I think they moved in. They just moved in with all their pirate booty? It's it's more just that the magnifying glass went to Florida because they were fighting the Moors. Okay. America, America was fighting the Moors in North Africa. As soon as that war ended, we unofficially started fighting the Moors in South Florida. Okay. Oh, so we went in, took over, and then we're like, oh, yeah, by the way, there's a lot of gold here, and now it's the richest city out there. Yes. Whoa, bro. Yep. And the when the first railroad got to Key West, the population plummeted. So think about that. The only way to get there was um, by boat up until uh, early 1900s, 1910s, I think, 1920s maybe. When the first railroad got to Key West, that Flagler used slaves to build, right? And Seminoles. They were using Seminoles and slaves to build it. Um, When they got there, the population decreased. So how does that make sense? If this is the first time that you can actually access it by land, all the people just leave. Makes very little sense. So they went there and killed everybody. Is that what you're saying? Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They now, went there, killed everything, transferred the wealth to essentially the white people, the new the new white people, and uh, the, the you know that's that's all there is to the story, really. Oh my god, dude, this is just so fucking blows my mind because, like, you know, this is Sam speaking. There has been a giant psyop against the black community. Uh, This victimhood put on them that they all came here in a fucking boat, defeated, and turned into slaves, right? When in reality, they discovered America and were here before a lot of people. Uh, We also had the Vikings, right? But the, 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 the Redskins, dude... I mean, just think about that. Can we bring that name back for the NFL? Yeah, we should. We should go tell them. Hey, man, it's actually well, a good thing. <laughs> Let's change why. your name. You just change your only, name to a Viking. You know who the only uh, Indian team that's still going with their Indian name in America? Who? The Braves? The Seminoles. Oh, the the Braves, Florida right? Seminoles. Florida State Seminoles. Well, we have the Braves, uh, yeah, the but... Braves, yeah. They'll probably change that soon. I don't think so. Oh, okay, I was I was thinking football. Sorry. Okay, it's all good. Damn, but, um, dude. So let's talk about some anchors. We, I've just shown you that there was some transatlantic people in the Americas before Columbus. Okay, and that shouldn't be too much of a shock to people because the Vikings were here officially. True. You know. True. Um, good point. Well, something I forgot to leave out: Mexico being the homeland of Islam. Mecca comes from the same root word as Mexico. And the old Mech of Mexico, well, there's your Mecca. There's your holy people of Islam, the old Mech. Oh, shit, the old Mech. You know mm-hmm. the old Mech? You, you, they, the huge heads, the huge heads that they find, those oh, are old Mech heads. And they do not look Native American, those oh. heads. They look they look either African or maybe even um, Oh, those Asian. big old heads! Yeah, yeah, you know, you know we've, we've talked about them. He's mm-hmm. right here. Oh, yeah. Damn. Well, you've got your, those are your, that's Mecca. So you're and saying they were Muslims? The cube? It's like Kang the Conqueror. They were a lot of things. Buddhism comes from, uh, people are going to roll their eyes because we're just going one after the next. But Buddhism comes from Mexico too, or at least was there before Christianity was. How do we know that? Well, Buddha's uh, mother was named Maya. Maya. His name was Guatemala. Guatemala. That's, Guata- that's Guatemala. Yeah. Exactly. So Guatem- Guatemala, Guatemala is the two words, Buddha names. Guatemala and Maya. Guatemala. That's Guatemala. And Guatemalans look like Buddhas. Sorry, guys. No, I, I have a question. Whenever I hear, you know, Johnny, things sound like things. Johnny's our skeptic. We, that's his job. It seems that sure. a lot of the 
the comparisons you're making are in anglicized versions of the country names and the words? Sure. That's what, a good what, angle. Why, why is that? No, no pun intended. That's a good angle. <laughs> well, gotcha. England does not belong to, sorry, English does not belong to England. English is the oldest language on the planet. And I can, I can verify that. Okay. okay. English is the okay. oldest language on the planet. Oh, Written sure. phonetic language. Keyword phonetic. English What's the oldest language in the planet? Written language, phonetic. Can you, uh, any of you guys tell me? Arabic? No, far from it. Before that, before the Hebrew, before the Aramaic? Greek. Aramaic? Before that, you have Phoenician. Okay, okay. Phoenician. From Phoenician, the Phoenicians were these ancient sea people that showed up from nowhere and rivaled the Greeks, rivaled the Romans, right? Were superior in many ways. They were much taller on average, okay? Uh, they came, they had a complete knowledge of the ocean and the sea and sea travel. The Romans and Greeks were so um, juvenile, considered compared to the Phoenicians, that they were afraid to travel the open sea. They had to keep the coastline within view or else they would get lost, right? Well, the Phoenicians could travel the open seas at night, too. They were not afraid to sail at night. The Greeks and the Romans were very afraid to sail at night. They could use the stars to guide themselves across the Atlantic. Well, the Phoenicians came to America. That's, that's besides the point. From Phoenician, you get uh, Hebrew. From Hebrew, you get Greek. From Greek, you get Roman. From Roman, you get English. Or Latin, sorry. From Latin, you get English. So I just told you where English comes from, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. Well, there's one problem. That's not the only place it comes from. Oh, you set it's, us up. Oh, it's, it's a one-of-a-kind language. Not only does it come from that, one of the oldest languages known to exist. Ri sorry, written alphabets. Alphabet. You, you also get English from the runic runic in scandinavia which is what the vikings the finnish people with their boats vikings you know sweden they were writing runic well i can show you runic and phoenician which went by the word punic so punic was another name for phoenician phoenician and runic are the same thing and from runic you get Germanic and you get English. So which which one is it? Academia is English come from Sanskrit? Sorry, not Sanskrit. Does it come from Phoenician? Or does it come from sorry, I got people trying to come in the door here at my store. So, um, <laughs> we appreciate you shutting down shop for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. But I'll show you uh, runic and punic. If you guys, if if someone doesn't know a little bit about language, this can kind of be hard to understand yeah, without visual. Yeah, explain to Xavier. I know what yeah, you're talking just, about, but yeah, explain, English, explain English is my second Xavier. language. Yeah, come on, give me a I, break. I, I, I have no English. clue what you're talking about. <laughs> English does not belong to England. It is angular writing system. It is an angular method of writing letters. That's it. It is angelic language. Because angels are angles. Angels of light are angles of light. I said so, the way in German, too. It's angle, I think, in German, as, as you say angels. So. You say angles? Angle, I think. Wow, I think like that. dude. All right, real quick, I want to tell you about Dave the Banking App. That's right. With the holidays around the corner, you might be wondering how you're going to be able to make ends meet and shower your loved ones with gifts. Dave can help get you out of a pinch so you can enjoy the holiday season, okay? Dave is the banking app that could help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. With Dave, there's no interest, late fees, or credit checks. There, That's more money to buy those late mint gifts or catch up on bills without having to wait for your next check. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hangups. Okay. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand from future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now 
or go to dave.com. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve Bank and Trust member FDIC. So runic, is that what the word is? Yeah, I actually don't have a picture of that. Dang. Uh, runic and punic. I'm going to look it up on the what internet. What are those? Is that runic? Is that Does that mean like it's runes written that way? Is runes? Is that, is that, is that what that means? Yes, runes. Thank you. Runes. Runes. Runic is runes. So here, I'm about to show you what I'm talking about. Officially, we are told that these two languages have no relation other than the fact that English is the perfect intersection point between these two most ancient languages. Okay. Now I'm about to show you my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Can I see that? Yeah. Yep. Well, there's Punic and there's Runic and they are the same and modern academia will not admit this. It's, uh, YouTubers with nothing better to do that are Hold on. people. Did you put, ones, did you spell fupa? fupa? <laughs> <laughs> it is. It does spell fupa. Yeah. <laughs> Fupa's been around for a while, dude. Oh, interesting. It's, it's the most ancient word known to man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's talk about some a little something more interesting we just started talking about the phoenicians right well the phoenicians are the atlanteans like i'll just start speeding up speaking matter of factly um florida is atlantis the tampa bay seaport is the capital seaport of atlantis the phoenicians came to america and that's already uh you know a contentious topic well the phoenicians are the descendants of the Atlanteans. You have the Atlantic Ocean, named for Atlantis. You have Atlanta, Georgia. You have Atlantic City in virtually every state on the East Coast. You have Lantana, Atlantis in the Bahamas. It's right in front of our faces, but no one will admit it. Um, the Pillar of Hercules is the Florida and the Yucatan. Pillars of Hercules in North Africa are not pillar shaped. Florida is pillar shaped. It's a big old uh, cock, essentially. The Yucatan <laughs> is the same thing. They're pillars. These are the pillars of Hercules. Uh, the Straits of Florida were actually called the Gibraltar of the West. Gibraltar of the West. Cuba. Haiti is Haiti's. Haiti is Haiti's. If Florida is paradise what's underneath paradise the underworld in the greek myth and the and the uh biblical myth H hades is right under paradise well florida's paradise and haiti is hades the underworld it's right there for everyone say that one more time so haiti is an island south of florida mm -hmm. okay yes haiti comes from hades not officially, but I'm telling you, it comes from Hades. And how do we know this? The Creek natives that, that populated the whole Gulf Coast area are Greek descended. The Greeks were some of the first people to populate Florida as well. Where they had two colonies in Florida when the English showed up in the 1700s. Okay, New Smyrna and Tarpon Springs, Florida. And Tarpon Springs, Florida ties into Atlantis because the Tampa Bay area, which is Tarpon Springs, is right there, was the capital seaport of Atlantis. There's so many bombs getting dropped here, my head is trying to digest it. Well, let's just show you a little stuff. We're talking about sea people. We were talking about the Garden of Eden. How do those two tie up? Well, the Garden of Eden comes from the Greek myth of the Garden of Hesperides. Hesperides is where we get the word paradise. Paradise comes from the Garden of Hesperides. Garden of Eden, Garden of Hesperides. Okay? From the Garden of Hesperides, we get Paradise, and Paradise is the Garden of Eden story. With Adam and Eve, well, that story is taken straight from the Greeks, too. That's Atlas and Hesperus. Atlas, Adam, At, At, right? Atlas is the father of Atlantis. So 
Adam is the patron god of Atlantis. So that tells you humanity comes from Atlantis. Well, that's the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Let me just, I'll just show you guys where I'm talking about. Yeah. Johnny, was, checking was in giant. thoughts. I love it. I'm, I'm Atlantis. I, I'm letting it wa- <laughs> wash over me. Was giant people, giant ships, giant culture, giant empire. Okay. They had to be you tall would, if they wanted to live that deep in the water, you know, like so, to breathe. You know, just well, around. I just sh- showed you some giants in Florida. So we know there was giants in Florida. And if we had an ancient maritime culture in Florida, around the world, where there is evidence of ancient maritime cultures, you find the most, uh, you find ancient stone anchors. Ancient stone anchors are on average about 500, 300 pounds, the size of a backpack, so that one man, two men, could throw it off the sides, off the side of a ship and pull it up. And this is how all sea travel was done for thousands of years up until about 500 years ago. Um, And basically, this is where it gets good, guys. (laughs) This is where it gets good? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This is crazy, bro. So this is an ancient stone anchor. Okay, this is getting pulled up in the Mediterranean or the Bahamas or something. And where you find ancient stone anchors like this, they have these are rocks with holes drilled through them, right, bored through them. And you find these mostly where you'd expect to find them, in the Mediterranean and in the Pacific and Polynesia, Indonesia, where you have a history, a very rich history of maritime travel, right, in maritime culture. Well, Florida, specifically the west coast of Florida, has the largest and oldest ancient stone anchors in the world, bar none. One problem, the modern academia does nothing uh to recognize them, has not studied them, has not sent anyone out to go look at them. They do not even acknowledge they exist. You cannot search, you cannot Google giant stone anchor or ancient stone anchor in Florida and find the ones that I'm talking about. You might find a couple like these small little guys that might keep a canoe. Well, I'm about to show you something. Whoa! You wouldn't believe. That is a 8,000 pound stone anchor made of solid limestone plopped in someone's front yard in Pinellas County, Florida, or Pasco County. These are concentrated around Pinellas and Pasco County, Florida, which is essentially near Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is Hillsborough County, Pinellas County, and Pasco County. That guy could not be more Florida, by the way. That is John Saxer. You guys can check out my channel documentary I made with him called The Saxer Stones or The Saxer Saga about these ancient stone anchors of Atlantis. Wow. So that's supposed and to stop like a boat, obviously, like a Christopher like a Christopher Columbus boat, like the Maria, the Santa Maria type one. of shit. Yeah. Like Santa Maria. That that a, a rock that size, an anchor that size, easily would hold down a Nina, a Pinta, or a Santa Maria. The one I'm about to show you would hold an aircraft carrier. You think this Whoa. one's big? You ready? Yeah. Beg for it, baby. <laughs> Beg for it. Oh, okay. Please. Can we get it? <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. He's about five foot nine, five foot ten. That's a 12 foot anchor, well over 10,000 pounds. That patina, the color on it, on it indicates the age. That is at least 7,000 years old, that rock. But I thought Senses. the first... So let me ask you something, though. So did somebody move that there? Uh, or was initi- that found Initially, there? yes. Basically, Atlantis was, was destroyed by a tsunami. Okay. That, that tsunami threw these anchors oh. up on, onto land and destroyed any trace of the ships that went with them. The ships would have been dematerialized immediately. Yeah. Okay. And do you know what this... Uh, event was this was the chicks chicks crater that is right across the gulf of mexico that is the 
that is the meteor that killed the dinosaurs and reshaped Earth as we know it. That's right across the bay from where you have evidence of a tsunami throwing the largest stone anchors known to man up onto Tampa Bay, essentially. What is the evidence that there was a tsunami? The fact that these are uh, dozens of miles inland and they originate from the ocean. Now, let me just ask you one. I just want to push back on one thing. Go back to that picture. The only question I have is why is it on like a... um, Well, that one was incorporated. So very recently, in the last 100 years, as uh, white people started moving down to Florida, it's only like Florida is only essentially 100 years old. 1920s is when everyone started coming down here in, in big groups and living here permanently. Up until then, the only reason people came down here was the spring water, the fountain of youth. But that's the we'll get into that another part. But sorry, what was your question? I got a little. But but okay. But when we look at this, there's like a sidewalk uh, display under. Yes, the these rock. were incorp- these were incorporated into the landscaping. So when they found these scattered across oh, gotcha. Florida, they would take them and prop them up and make them kind of like the centerpiece of these shitty little neighborhoods. This one's in the ghetto. So, so they just they just stuck it in some concrete and just stood it up and just they're like, all right, done here, and just left. And Could that be no an one, argument? No one even knows what this is. And these have rope marks. So these holes have rope marks that indicate that they've been, you know, uh, ropes have been hugging them and eroding a very – a small little kind of corner where you can see the rope has worn down the rock. Uh, I'll show you another one. People might say, well, oh, that is that hole natural? Maybe those holes could be natural, right? Maybe these well, are just glory holes for giants. <laughs> well, that one has a, I, I've joked before on my channel, that one has a bleached asshole. This one. <laughs> <laughs> but... If you want to say that this could be a natural hole, you certainly couldn't tell me this is a natural hole. And inside that hole, there is the same patina or coating that tells you this rock was pulled out of water and exposed to air 7,000 years ago. Inside that hole, that hole was made thousands of years ago. A perfectly bored hole. So, so you're telling me people have been Wow, you're can't hear you. Oh, you're saying people have been... Still can't hear you. You're saying, no. Hold on. Uh, you're saying now people. You you're saying people ha, uh, have been traveling here way before because of those, of those uh, anchors. Would you say Christopher Columbus knew where he was going instead of saying, you know how they say he was going to India trying to get spices? Hold on, hold on, stop. Do I do? You, based on everything you've learned so far, what? do you think the official story that he thought he was going to India? No, no. no. I want to know. Real? No, I want to know if he already knew where he was going. Like if he already knew destination. Of someone yeah. saying. This is the address to get there. And yeah, they just made the it up. Yeah, yeah. Yes, whatever. You know why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Uh, everyone that went on that ship with Columbus's first voyage on those three ships were Spanish, right? That's kind of what we've been told. Well, that's not true. Christopher Columbus, there was one very special man on that voyage. One very special man. His name was Guillermo Harris. And Guillermo Harris was the navigator for the voyage. Navigator. Hmm. How do you have a navigator for somewhere you've never been before in a direction no one has ever gone before? What's the point of bringing a navigator? Yeah. It may. Well, not only was that navigator uh, pretty much obsolete in that scenario, they, they're going to undiscovered lands. They thought the world was... Um, they thought they were going to fall off the edge, and that's no diss towards towards flat Earth. And uh, you know, I'm I'm down with the FE for sure. <laughs> but uh, they thought you'd fall off the edge, and we we now know that's ridiculous. But why do you need a navigator to go off the edge? You know. Well, uh, l- let me just cut to the chase. That navigator, I told you his name, Guillermo Harris, right? That's a Spanish name. Wrong. That is a. Sp- Spanicized name. His real name was William Harris, and he was an Irishman. And that Irishman was the only Irishman on that expedition. 
and Columbus met him. And he told Columbus that I know of a continent, large continent, unknown to man, and that's where he took Columbus. So the Irish have been going to America well before the Spanish, well before. That's why they needed a Irish navigator to get there. And what was I telling you about the Seminoles and the Moors? They're half Irish. Whoa. Dude, this is crazy, bro. So these are just regular stone anchors, like normal-sized ones, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can see the difference between these stone anchors. And having two holes on that stone anchor is a dead giveaway that that is a stone anchor because when you would deploy these, they would get stuck in the muck down at the bottom. At the bottom. And in order to pull them up, you would have a rope on one side and a rope in the other hole. And two men would go to either side of the ship and they would rock this boat. They would rock, <laughs> they would rock the, um, they would pull the ropes from either side and rock the, the rock loose. They'd rock the rock loose and pull it up. So that's what the two holes are for in one anchor, right? And these are all over golf courses. What are these, these are stones all over. called? Sorry? Is there a name for these stones? I am the first person to name them. And what I am literally the first person to name them in America. And they, I named them Saxer stones because they were discovered by a man named John Saxer. All Very right. interesting man. You can check out the whole story on these uh, anchors and Atlantis. Florida was Atlantis. You can check out the whole story on my YouTube channel. Saxer stones, Saxer saga, and a new one coming out called the Saxer something. I haven't decided yet, but John Saxer, he's descended from a royal family. Uh, actually, the royal family. He's actually a cousin to the Queen of England. They're, they're the false bloodline. He's the true bloodline. If you knew, uh, Anglo means English, right? Well, Saxon means German. Saxon, he is the, from the Von Sachs family. Christ, John Saxer. If you go look up the Queen of England's real last name, the Queen of England's real last name is Saxa. Saxa. They changed it during World War I because they were fighting. They were fighting the Germans, and they are German. So they had to change their names so that their country wouldn't revolt against them. Yeah. So that's why. Okay. That's, so the question gets into who installed them? The anchors? No, the royal family. Who installed the fake royal family? <laughs> well, um, it's not so much that they're fake. It's just that they're they're too inbred to uh, be effective <laughs> to be effective anymore. So they are descended descended from the right bloodline, but they haven't done well with that with that royal blood. They've I've heard so many stories. You know, and this gets into like why is everything a lie? And it's like you got back to Rome. And the Vatican. And like to mm -hmm. me, this just one more just is another thing of black nobility and like black cube of set all this like dark arts, fallen angel, like stuff like this is why nobody knows. Well, that's why that's why Cuba's communist, because Cuba is the land of the cube, like I was saying. Land is dude. Cuba is the land of the cube, the Kaaba. Kaaba is Cuba. Okay. And this is the original cube. Like I said, the fertile, the crescent. Um, Super interesting, dude. Then you get into like China, Confucianism, and how Confucianism is like basically the, 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 the father of communism. It's like there's so much information. And it's like, like this just fits into everything we've been talking about. And it's like mm -hmm. it totally clicks and like we would you consider this ancient history like to me it's not because ancient history is like egypt that's what i consider like ancient this is just shit they didn't want us to know in my eyes like well this, this is hidden history. Well, it's both. Hidden. yeah it's both. more like hidden history yeah but yeah i don't quite atlantis get the atlantis i think predates egypt it does the sea people predated egypt um 
You know, we were, you were just talking about the Romans and the Egyptians. Well, believe it or not, they're actually some of the same people. How do we know that? Gypsies, which come from Egypt, we get the word gypsy from Egypt. What do they call themselves? Romani. Romani. Those are the Romans. Oh, the Romani. my God. Really? The, yeah. the true Romans. This is why Rome ruled Egypt for a very uh, large amount of time. And this was a one world empire. This wasn't just uh, one empire giving way to the next, then conquering the next, then giving way to the next. Before the church, the world had harmony like you could not imagine. I, okay. Dude, I, you are speaking exactly what I believe. The Vatican, black nobility, the rewriting of Christianity, the rewriting of just everything. Well, where did the black nobility come from? From Venice, right? Venice, the Venetian uh, bloodlines. Well, you have a Venice in Florida, a Venice in New Orleans. Okay, you have so many Venices in, in, the in, South, in South L.A. Oh, there's one in here in L.A. There's in one Venice in LA. in L.A., thank you. And what's California? Oh. California is the caliphate, the caliphate, caliph. It's a caliph, California. It's Islamic. These are Islamic people, you know. The, uh, some of the first accounts of the native Californian people were dark, dark, dark-skinned people, black-skinned. Okay, Cali, Cali, if I'm not mistaken, is the black goddess, Cali, and from uh, Hindu. Oh, look that up, bro, dude. This is crazy. But well, I she's not. She's not always black, but she's dark-skinned, blue, blue-skinned. Right, blue. So want me to type in? Yeah, so what? go with that. See what that is. See if that comes up. I don't think that's Kali. Kali, K A L I. K A L I. K K K. Not C. The other K. Oh, oh yeah. Sh- oh, we've oh, we've had her up. Shit. So that's California, Cali, and fornication. Right. Exactly how Chilipa. it feels right now living Chilipa. in California. Oh my God. So this is the land of Kali, Kali, right? California is the Kali Yuga. It's the, uh, the, the, uh, zone of madness and mental illness and, uh, and, fornication and treachery and, and Kali is the goddess of what death. So, you know, Hinduism is not Hindu cosmology is not my expertise at all. Um, she who is she who is these death. Gods, she is who death, bro. She's a destroyer. Shiva's the destroyer. I guess she kind of has what does it say? The ultimate goddess of power. The goddess of ultimate power oh. is what they say. You know, there's a Baghdad, Florida. There's a Baghdad, Florida. Um, there's a Jerusalem, Salem, and all these southeastern states. But uh. You know, the wood that Noah's Noah's Ark comes from Arkansas, down the Missis- no. Mississippi River. Wait up, what? <laughs> Noah's Ark, yeah. And the Appalachian Mountains are the Apple of Eden. The Apple of Eden, of paradise, Appalachia. The Appalachicola River. Of the 28 trees that grow in Eden, that are named in Eden, 27 of them grow in the Appalachicola area of Florida. Oh my God, dude! And what? gopher wood, which is the w- wood that the in the Bible, the ark was made from gopher wood, right? Okay. Gopher wood grows one place in the world, Florida, along the Apalachicola River, near Tallahassee. What's Tallahassee? Ta Allah, Allah, right? This is all Arabic. So this was an Arabic land. Islamic, the fertile crescent, the true fertile crescent was the Gulf of Mexico. Dallas, da Alas, Dallas, Tallahassee, right? Um, Alaska, Alaska, Algonquin, Alberta. Um, the list, you know, goes on and on and on and on. I These are Ar- Arabic everything. prefixes. All right, so let's get into your number five talking point. Uh, <laughs> Dude, listen, you're crushing it. You're crushing it. I'm just downloading so much information. 
I, 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 I need a half time. You need, you, you, Sam needs to take his hat off. Just let the heat kind of radiate. Yeah, I, I'm, just count, I'm just trying to digest everything you're saying because it's coming from so left field, but it's all tracking at the what same a great, time. What, what a great way to end the year, though, with some, with some heat like this. This is great. I mean, dude, we got nothing but bangers at it the really end of the is. show, bro. We're doing a good job here. At the end of the year, but man. Thanks, Mark. Dude, we're living in the wrong state. We're living in Black Cali. He's talking about yeah, the bro. fountain of youth. We got to move, It sounds like dude. we might need to. You've always loved St. Pete, right? I, yeah. Dude, if I give the, the mother the children to move there, bro. I'd move to Florida in a heartbeat. I'll fight mosquitoes, dude. <laughs> so what is this Croshan unity? What is that? Okay. The Koroshan unity. Oh, I got close, bro. I'm so proud of myself. So Koresh, uh, Cyrus, Cyrus Teed was a man that started a cult in another state. I think. Um, David Shana. Koresh? I don't remember. No, that's a different cult member. That's a different Koresh that took the name. Koresh. They both, um, the one I'm talking about adopted the name Koresh. The guy you're talking about, I'm not sure. But Koresh is essentially Persian, right? There's another Middle Eastern Arabic theme popping up. Is Persian for Christ or Cyrus. Christ, Koresh, okay? Now, this guy, he started a hollow earth cult a celibate hollow earth cult and moved down to florida where he said he was going to start a new jerusalem that would house 10 million people and they started building these gardens they started building this land this estate this commune in estero florida near fort myers now who were their next door neighbors well, I'll tell you, Thomas Edison and Henry Ford were essentially their neighbors just in the next town over. Henry Ford and Thomas Edison would spend days and days on this commune with these cultists. And in fact, these cultists had some of the first electricity in America because they were friends with Thomas Edison. Henry Ford would go there and talk about them, talk with them about astrology. He almost got his palms read one time, but his assistant stopped him and said, don't, you know, they might, it might be black magic, right? But they loved going there, Thomas Edison and Henry Ford, who were actually butt buddies. They lived back to back in a house on the same property. Lived Hold back to on. back, slept More front to back. Are you are you are you, are you oh, are you being they were they were lovers? Is that what you're saying? It's alleged because they spent so much time together. So guys can't they, be friends. They took, they took a ten year did you know that Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and Harvey Firestone, who was the guy that Firestone tires that made all the tires for Ford's cars, right? Uh, remember, Ford's the guy that chopped down half the Amazon, uh, supported the Nazis. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. That's a different episode. But um, basically, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, you were talking about how uh, talking about Ford Harvey and Firestein. Essence were, and, fi Firestein. and Firestein were all yeah. having gay orgies. They took a 10-year road trip, a 10-year road trip around America and brand new Model T's, Ford cars, one of a kind. They were van lifing. They were glamping throughout America. The first, this was the first ever road trip, by the way. First ever road trip, you can search it up, was Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and their billionaire friends taking a trip throughout America. And that trip started in the Everglades. It started where they would hang out with those cultists, right? Now, their road trip, the official start of their road trip, the official first destination, was the pan what's it called um panama pacific international exposition a world fair so their oh. their uh, tour of america or as i like to call it the tour de tartaria or hey, the hey, robber hey, baron hey. the robber Sam baron road up. trip started with a world's fair they started out going to a World's Fair. If you know about Tartaria, you know what the World's Fairs were for. Free energy. Free energy. Thomas Edison for sure needs to show up there. 
Exactly. He, this whole time he was fighting a, a, a war where is electricity going to be free or is it going to be charged wow. by the minute? And, and he said, damn right, it's going to be charged. So what are the odds that the two men that helped to solidify us in this um, industrial serfdom, slavery, slavehood, where you have a car to go to work to get money to, to put gas in your car so that you can go to work, so that you can make money to put gas in your car just so that you can go to work. Where did that all come from? It started with each family getting a Model T. Yep. And how did they advertise those Model Ts? By taking this road trip. And taking this road trip, the World's Fairs uh, did the job of introducing new technology. That road trip, starting with a World Fair, did the same purpose to brainwash the masses. This is what car culture looks like. This, you can actually, I kid you not, you can trace the origins of fast food, motels, gas stations, all of these things we take for granted and we just assume are normal parts of life originate from this road trip between yep. Henry Ford and Thomas Edison. Yep. And everywhere they went, they were probably rewriting history, if, if I had to guess. Yeah, he's and right. Went, Henry Ford made his car, the T-Model, the perfect price for his workers to buy it. So they'd have to work for him forever. You want the exactly. car? That's fine. You're just going to exactly. keep working forever for me. But you can afford it. You can walk, drive around. Mm -hmm. but you're my slave forever. He made a, yeah. a perfect price so they could keep working, but ha can't quit. You quit, mm -hmm. you can't, can't take the car. Jeez. Yeah, and yeah. we have seen no innovation on the internal combustion engine since its advent with the Model T. We have seen zero innovation. Okay, They have not innovated it. They've, pre they've presented us with a false artificial alternative, which is the electric cars, right? Oh, don't do the bad, scary gas, do the electric cars, right? Instead of improving the gasoline so that it's way more efficient, which cars used to be, ask anyone, they'll tell you, the gasoline used to be more efficient, they used to be better. But they tell you it's better now because they add, they add um, things that they don't need to be adding into the gas. Um, as you know, this whole pandemic thing went down and they took what did they take out of the gas the ethanol they took ethanol out of the gas right these motherfuckers. so you used to be able to run these engines uh these a diesel engine you could run off of vegetable oil and this is what they wanted to get us off of they wanted every person who else who else retired down to florida at pretty much the same exact time john d rockefeller John D. Rockefeller was doing the gas for the cars. Ford was selling you the cars, building the cars, making sure that they had expensive gas engines. And then Firestone was providing the rubber from the Amazon for those cars. So these three robber barons were in bed together, and they were just shilling their crap to us, you know. They I mean, were we literally all, in bed together, too. We all take cars for granted, you know. Jeez. Cars aren't inherently evil, but they could be done better. And I'm not some global warming, uh, you know, retard, but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, perfect, perfect. that's not how you get it done is by, uh, I forgot where I was going. Cutting that. emissions. That's not the way to do it. No, by trying right. to get into it's electricity. Just, it's, just, it's just another form of metricing, metricing, metering you so that they can charge you for every breath you take in a couple of years they're going to be saying oh that's too much carbon that's too much carbon <laughs> oh that's, they're trying you know. they're trying i think they're going to lose man i think people are waking up more and more i think i think if they could take down the internet they would i think there's forces of light that are are battling back that's my personal opinion i mean that's just yep. my personal and who's opinion. and who's leading that battle who is leading that battle of good against evil jesus well, it's Jesus. It's the good state of Florida. Oh, that snap! Is stop! At the, the vanguard of that battle. How do you feel about your governor? God bless him. I wish we had 50 of them. Man, they all love that. I, I, yeah, mean, well, I, I wish mean, that's I how get we why felt you here. love him. I wish that's how we he, felt. He's in got some Zionists in him, which uh, is kind of. How do you guys like your governor? <laughs> we, oh, hate we hate him. We hate him. But of course, we're in the Black Cali. Yeah. yeah. yeah we don't have yeah. Damn, you know, dude. Uh, 
you know, we were talking about Cuba a little. Uh, oh wait, no, that's 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 the guy from Canada. Never mind. We were <laughs> talking dope. Cuba. We we did talk Cuba. Oh well, what's Canada? Canada is Canaan. It's also Canaan, the land of the Canaanites. Well, that makes from sense. The Bible. Since he, his father was Cuban, so that's. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Johnny. Johnny, everybody scoring points today. So let's get into, let's end this on a bang. It's all right. Well, I mean, I can't believe there's more bangs. This might be called a gang bang. That's just <laughs> there's so many bangs. <laughs> we're banged today. out, dude. For sure. Right, we're running out of bangs. Everyone's tired. We're going to need a blue chew. I don't even know if blue chew could save us at this point. There's been so many bangs. Let's get into this astrology and astro theology. Of the ancient world, if you could. Hmm. Sure. Okay. Oh, hold on. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Yeah. that was literally your notes, bro. You got something like, better? You probably yeah, got something like, better. Like I just was like. <laughs> Man, this store's busy. They, yeah, I mean, well, I, dude, he's yeah, waving sorry, off it's, people. It's a busy store. Okay, busy let store. me. Uh, listen, if you got to get back to business, then. <laughs> no, it's okay. We don't have to, but if you want to spend five to 10 minutes on it real quick, then you sh- okay. we'll, sh- we'll, sure. we'll shut it down. I'd like to show you some giant trees, too, because yeah. I think. You want to go out with a bang? That's oh good. yeah, Eddie, yeah. Let's go out with the bang. Whatever well, yeah, the bang. Let's is. go with a big bang. Yeah. We we we, drove, we heard about this. I was Eddie Bravo thinks that a lot of mountains are trees. Well, we're not going to be looking at that big of trees, but <laughs> uh, Florida has had keyword had okay had as big trees as California, as Oregon, as the Pacific. Uh, Northwest, they're all gone now. One other thing, they were actually on average twice as old as the redwoods and sequoias of the West Coast. You had bald cypress in Florida. Okay. The bald cypress of Florida in 2012, a tree that was 3,500 years old and stood 120 feet tall was burnt down by a meth addict that was smoking meth in the middle of the tree, in the middle of the hollowed out trunk. This happened in in Florida. Right? That is Florida for you, though. That is Florida. <laughs> in the middle, inside you. the tree. Hang on. I wonder if his dream was like, I'm going to smoke meth under this awesome tree. No, he it- thought he was a hobbit, dude. That's what it was. You know, he was. He was like, dude, I just, I'm a hobbit now. I'm going to live in this tree and. Gandalf is going to come. Uh, it's yeah. not a bad idea to live I'm a under white it. wizard! Then all the fire, and he was like, Saruman, what is this? <laughs> there was actually a woman. There was uh, a woman that burnt down the tree. Oh, no kidding. So that's not the tree that I'm talking about. This tree is outside of Flagler's house, Henry Flagler. Henry Flagler, I forgot to make that connection. Henry Flagler was the business partner of John D. Rockefeller. And Henry Flagler was a co-founder of Standard Oil with John D. Rockefeller. This is the man that pretty much built Florida, Henry Flagler. He built St. Augustine. He built Miami, Palm Beach. Okay, he actually named Miami. They were going to name Miami Flagler Beach. And he said, no, don't name it Flagler Beach. Name it Miami. So he knew. He knew the Maya came had come to Florida, too. That's why you have uh, Miami, Ohio. We're told that's officially unrelated. That, that is definitely related. But can you guys see what I'm yeah, showing right here? Yeah, how big this freaking tree is? What is it standing on? Isn't it cut through? Nope. That is a tree growing out of the ground in Florida uh, in the late 1800s, late, late 1890s, if I had to guess. God by the time, it, By the time they started cutting down the ones in California, most of the ones in Florida had already been cut down. They were as big... If not, um, usually a little smaller, but we have no idea because they were all gone by the time we all got here. And on average, 2,000 plus years old. The one you're looking at right there is about 4,000 years old. 4,000 year old bald cypress tree in Florida. This is the senator. This is that tree in 2012 that got burned down. It has a hollow trunk. That tree... 3,500 years old. When Jesus was born, that tree was already fully grown 
and 2,000 years old. Sorry, 1,500 years old when Jesus was born. And Florida was packed to the brim with trees like these. And all we have are these little remnants, little leftover logs. That one's gone. No, no trace. This is the senator. Biggest and oldest bald cypress in the world. Blah, blah, blah. 125 feet tall. It was actually 160 feet tall at one point, but a a storm knocked it down. It had been there for 3,500 years until a meth addict went in the middle of it and smoked, (laughs) set something on fire, and it burnt down the entire tree. Sounds like an agent provocateur to me. This tree is was older than every single tree um, in California. In sorry, every single in redwood in Sequoia. They have those old uh, desert trees that are older. And which, um, and I highly doubt that was the only one in Florida. Why is there only one of those motherfuckers? Oh th- well, this was just the biggest one left. It has a sister named. Um, named lady liberty that's two thousand years old and she's still alive but she's not as big still very very big but all of these were destroyed essentially there you can see a big old chunk i have a video about this these parasites they're parasites they've made deals Mm -hmm. with the fallen and they've shish kebobbed our history so we don't know how special we are that's what it all is bro so I've got one more thing for you. You you said astrology. Yeah. And I will show you some serious astrology. So Florida, Florida's birthday is March 3rd. That makes Florida a Pisces in modern times. Modern times, okay? Legally, Florida is a Pisces because if Florida had a birthday, that birthday being March 3rd makes Florida a Pisces. Well, in the ancient world... Let me see. In the ancient world, Florida was associated with the sign of Pisces. Now, is that a coincidence? How can that be? Two thousand years ago, two thousand years ago, they associated this state with the same constellation in the sky as today. Florida's birthday puts it in that same constellation of Pisces. Let me explain. You know, I I know this is hard to understand, to hear for the first time. In Egypt, the pyramids are uh, arranged to the stars, correct? They're arranged to the stars of Orion's belt. So those pyramids are modeled after Orion's belt. And many, many other sites in Egypt are arranged to Orion's belt. Well, that's a different constellation. In Florida which is filled with pyramids, by the way. Florida is filled with pyramids. I should have said that earlier, probably. They don't call them pyramids. They call them mounds. So Florida was home to an ancient mound-building culture that would have cities with millions of people, gold, silver, sea travel, such refined society, until the Spanish came here and erased all history of that but we're talking about pisces fuck spanish so what i'm i love the mexicans what i'm showing you is different mounds or pyramid sites old earthworks castles temples blah 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 burial sites that are plotted on different points throughout florida now these sites none of them are arranged by accident none of them They are all arranged to the constellation of Pisces. Pisces rules fish. Well, Florida is the fishing capital of the world. It also rules the elderly. Well, Florida is where all the elderly move to. It rules water. Florida has the highest concentration of freshwater springs in the world. Okay. Um, That's a better picture of what I'm talking about. These sites, these ancient sites, have all been aligned to the sign of Pisces. Here we go. An old hook um, constellation. These are shell mounds. 
And any any time you see the word mound in America, you can pretty much replace it with pyramid. You're not allowed to use the word pyramid in America because that that debunks the mainstream. If there's all these pyramids here in America, how'd they get here? What people were doing it? It wasn't the Native Americans with feathers and bows and arrows that were doing this stuff. It was something superior. It was something ancient and technologically wow. advanced. That that was terraforming this entire continent. Not only just for fun, not only just for necessity, but divinely ordained, sacred arrangements due to the stars everywhere, all over America, not just Florida, but Florida is special because you have this connection where today Florida is ruled by Pisces. In ancient times, it was ruled by Pisces. The odds of that lining up are like a trillion to one, okay? Here you have different mounds, the Tomoka mounds, middens arranged to Pisces. I know it's hard to imagine what you're looking at right here, but these are each one of these little plotted points is essentially a pyramid or a pyramid covered with dirt, like a hill, a mound, right? Same thing. Stars of Pisces, all these different sites. And not a peep about this on Discovery Channel. Well, let me just show you. what type of mounds these are, what a pyramid looks like, what a mound looks like. You see this um, hill? Yeah. That's a mound. That's a midden. Respect. Okay? Yeah. We've, yeah. You want to you, you know what that mound looks like without the dirt? Yeah. Like that. Well, here, let's see if I can... And are you saying the government covered that up? Like America or who, who would, I mean, that wouldn't be easy. To cover up. That's, a, that's a good, that's a good place to start. That's a good question. Was it a mud flood? Was this just natural thousands of years of just dirt and leaves and Whoa, you know, mud flood might explain it. That's true. But this is a massive, massive pyramid. Now let me sh let me show you what um because Gobek what is it Gobeki Tekli or whatever did didn't they Tepe. yeah didn't they bury that purposely Hang wasn't on. that underground completely underground I'm trying to find this uh there's this picture that perfectly explains it um God damn it I should have been more prepared you're but, dead uh, to us you're dead to us you're dead. But this will show exactly what I'm trying to explain. There you go. Perfect. Voila. Oh, wow. You see this? Yeah, yeah that's the big, that's like the biggest oh, one. Oh, really? They went through and just cleaned it up, huh? They all were cleaned up. They all just look like piles of dirt when you first show up. If you first, if you're first coming to America, they all look like piles of dirt because the native people living here at the time were not the people that built them. They didn't even know what the fuck they were for. Right? Oh, but man. here, let me see if I can oh, man. pull this down for you. My screen's all there. We go. Okay. But well, you got to get rid of that one thing. There we go. Wow. There you go. So Florida is filled with what you see on top. No one is expecting to find what's underneath because they have been, they have not been taught to suspect such. What if I told you that the majority of the mounds in Florida were incorporated into golf courses? Golf courses. The golf courses of Florida are on top of Indian burial mounds and pyramids. And that's a fact. You can look that up. Oh if you go take a trip to Palm Beach, Palm Beach. Chaos. On Palm, on Palm Beach Island in a city park. They have a plaque that tells you what I just told you, oh that they chose where the golf courses would go based off of the hilliest areas. Well, in Florida, the only hilly areas are these mounds. Did you know that the original 
state flag of Florida had mountains in the background? I did not know. Well, all of these mountains were very sharp, very, very sharp looking. And what they do, knock them down? That's high, that's high spell. <laughs> no, they didn't knock them. Well, actually, they did. The majority of them, they took, they either covered in golf courses or deconstructed. You see this? You see the pyramid? Yeah. You see the mountains in the back of Florida? Yeah. There's no mountains in Florida, not one. So what are these in the background? They're pyramids. Wow. I mean, yep. there's definitely no mountains. So you're, yeah. Wow. Let, me, let me see if I can get that picture full size. Wow. And who's that? Who's that woman in the front there? That's a seminal one. And that's a steam powered ship. There's your pyramids in the back. Your covered covered pyramids, right? A little messy, but well, nonetheless. That was 1876. Wow. I think so. Yeah. Is that what it said? Yeah, I think it said 1876. Yeah. And do you know in 19 in 1980s they got rid of the pyramids, and this is the new one. They got rid of the mountains, and this is the new one. With just uh. See, no mountains. They took out the mountains in 1985. Well, our minds are blown. Past blown. Too much. Too much. <laughs> Too much. This really could have been about three or four episodes. Yeah, I mean, we got our minds blown. We're, we're just in crazy town right now. Damn, dude. Damn. Well, Dr. Narco Longo, got to be honest with you, I expected some old crazy guy, some old crazy dude in a Hawaiian shirt <laughs> with a fucking nicotine stained mustache talking crazy. And, you know, little did I know I'd get Dirt Nowinski's kid who dropped Hammer of the Gods on us and uh, really blew our <laughs> minds, bro. And I'm blown away, dude. I find it, everything you said, super interesting, ma'am. And I am, uh, uh, dude, I, I, I think you're on to something. And I have always said this. is like they have been lying to us about the history of this place. And you are, you make me think that America, we always hear it's something special. And this makes me think that's really close to bullseye. Mm-hmm. And Absolutely. So, uh, go on, sorry. We didn't even talk about the Fountain of Youth. Okay, I mean, save it. <laughs> save it. Yeah, you're coming back. Let's, keep, let's give him, We'll get you back, New bro. Year's banger. We'll give him a New Year's banger we'll right off the bat. We'll figure that out, bro. Let's do it. So much. We, you, I, you've <laughs> annihilated people's brains, bro. You've annihilated them. Just, just the tip of the iceberg. That was just one one folder in my just laptop. Just the tip, this guy. Yeah. Just the tip, Dr. The Narco. Tip. I, dude. One more time. Tell them where they can find you. Um, old world Florida on YouTube, old underscore world underscore Florida on Instagram, and that's really it. They know where to find me. All right, you know? ma'am. Well, I uh, hope we didn't make you lose any business by shutting down shop, but hopefully, we're gonna send you a bunch of subscribers, guys. Please go to please go to old world Florida, subscribe, support. Uh, he's got some great videos. And uh, you just blew our mind, man. Thank you so much for coming on. Guys, we love you. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed all the episodes you've been getting lately because we've been trying to go hard to pay for you all. Uh, we have another week of shows, and we'll figure it out. We love you very much. Thank you guys for tuning in, and we will talk to you soon. Take care, everybody. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, Tim foil hack.